Hey, what's up, fellas? This is one of those uh, war stories. Uh, I just got off the phone with a guy by the name of McKenzie. It's a guy I used to bump around with when I was assigned to the uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia. Uh, and I was assigned to the um, cotton balers. I can't remember if it was... Cotton balers, by God, damn fine soldiers is the thing we used to do. We used to do the, uh, we used to have to say the, uh, I wouldn't give a bean to be a fancy pants marine. I'd rather be a dog face soldier like I am. I wouldn't trade my old ODs for all the Navy's dungarees. Because I'm the fighting thing of Uncle Sam. Anyways, long story short. This is uh, to tell you about the absolute... And this is the first goal for the absolute fucking hypocrisy, as well as some of the shit that uh, I had to deal with being in the 36 EOD in Panama. So we'll start back in the early 80s. So in the early 80s, they decide that uh, women are just as good as men are in the military, you know, even though. You can't road march like I can. You can't stay in the field as long as I can. You can't carry what I can. You can't fight me off. If we get into a fight and you're a feet man, so let me just stop. So we get assigned this captain, Lynn E. Cruz. And she ended up getting kicked out of the unit for uh, being a sexual predator against... She was a lesbian, so anyways... She played rugby. She just, oh my God, I can't even fucking tell you. Couldn't run, couldn't do push-ups, couldn't do pull-ups, couldn't, couldn't carry her own weight. And we go on back then, uh, uh, they would come down from the United States to Panama to give us what's called a RTEP, which means they test your readiness to deploy or how to react. And our very first time, and, and she just acted all the time. She acted all the time like she was tough and could handle the pressure and, and do what it takes to be the commander of an EOD detachment. 36 EOD, Corzo, Panama. So, we're on our, our convoy, and we get ambushed. And what does Lynn E. Cruz do? Our, our, our first sergeant at the time, his name was Patrick Garner. He's at the back, Cruz is in the front. And what does Cruz do? What, is, what does Captain Cruz do? She calls in an artillery strike on us and not the bad guys because she didn't know what the fuck she was doing and got us all fucking killed. So we spend 18 hours getting ready to make our initial move into our zone of operation and she wipes us out. So anyway, my, anyways, my, my, my. That's, that's the other one. So, anyways, I leave Panama, and I get to go into, I, 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 I offer up my paperwork, and I get accepted into an SIED unit, which is a special, it's a damn Andrews Air Force Base, so. And guess who becomes my commanding officer? Lee D. T. Ty Sanford. Ah. Uh, and she, what she did is her first duty station when she was in the chemical battalion, she married a specialist. Ah, anyways, fucking, oh. And because I had a lot of experience, whenever it was her turn to go on uh, IED, uh, an actual briefcase bomb or something like that, we'd get all the way, I'd have to, anyways, I'd have to do all the fucking work and we'd get out there and she goes, hey, I'm going to let you take this one. And I'm like, I got a fucking wife and two kids. You just you just married to some guy you were stationed who was your subordinate. And then anyway, she, she couldn't do the push-ups, she couldn't do the sit-ups, she had tiny legs, couldn't make the run, and everybody had we oh, oh. so anyway. So now they finally get rid of these ladies, and the other one was bam. Beverly Ann Marchica. Jesus Christ, she was all fucked up and broke. Couldn't fucking, it smoked like cigarettes, uh, just smoked like a fucking chimney. Could, fell out of it. We'd have runs where, you know, the first sergeant enlisted guys, and we'd get up there, and we'd all be whooping ass, and all of a sudden, she'd just fucking bail. And somebody else would have to fucking take on it. 
We'll come back and she go, all right, man, way to go, guy. Man, fuck out of here. Uh, so anyways, it's finally, um, it's a desert shield. And it's getting ready to turn into desert storm. So, And uh, the unit I was with was a, uh, Jesus Christ, Bravo Company 3-7 mechanized, I think it was, mechanized infantry. And I was sliced out to them. And we're... Uh, well, all you're doing is you're waiting for the engineers to breach what's the berm, and Saddam Hussein called it the Lake of Fire, and he'd burn us all up. And anyway, anyway so and um, some of us, like guys like me, well, I, I'd been in, I'd seen crazy stuff in Central and South America, El Salvador, Guatemala. So, anyways, anyway, so we're set up in what's called a cabal, and what it is is they build a uh, wall of sand in in a big square. And then inside of that, each company has uh, a side of the square that they're responsible for. Anyway, it doesn't fucking matter. So we're in there, and we have a first sergeant. His name is Durfee. And um, this female logistician comes in, maybe five foot three, got that tapered haircut, the flat top black, black woman obviously overweight and out of shape and she's walking around saying that she's here to inspect our defensive positions without any notice she's got her her driver's female she's female the guards that are with her are female and just and the first time he was like no you can't we're not doing that she did you know who i am I'm not. And then you bring over and we're just like get the fuck out of here i just get yeah. Anyways, this is the same Sergeant Major when we were back in uh, uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia. She couldn't make the run. She'd always fall out by the side, be over there dry. Man, fucking get out of here, man. You know, you talk about all these women want to be equal. They don't want to fucking do the work. They can't do the physical requirements. But you know what they get? They get uh, selected because of their gender or their ethnicity. Now, nah, anyways, I just, I just, I can't, but yeah, anyways, uh, we were talking on the phone and just, it's just fucking ridiculous, man. And you have to, we have to fucking pretend that they can make it. And and then it, we're getting ready to risk our lives and we're just like, fuck that. I'm not putting up with this bullshit from this stupid ass. Fuck out of here. It just totally offended. Oh, I'm gonna tell. <laughs> and you know what ended up happening? And she went back and told her major, and her major told their lieutenant colonel, "This is logistic people. They they provide the beans and the bullets and the fuel to all the rest of us." And uh, by the time she got back, the two star general, I can't remember his fucking name, but he was already sitting in our uh, uh, command bunker. Uh, talking to our colonel, our lieutenant colonel, and um, they show up and boom, because <laughs> they showed me anyways. They were fucking, they made him fucking get the fuck out of here. Nah. If you can't do the fucking job that you signed up for, you're a liability. I'm talking to you, ladies. Nah. Equal rights. Fuck that. You can't do the job. I had to put up with it. I mean, when I first came in the military, we didn't have, I, I, I probably served 10 of my 18 years without ever seeing a female other than being like a finance clerk or in laundry or logistics or supply or something like that. And then, then all of a sudden they're just everywhere. You turn around and they can't run. They can't do the push-ups. They can't do the pull-ups. They can't hang. But you know what? Somebody anointed them and said, oh, they're, they're going to be in charge of you. And you're like, this, this bitch is going to get us all fucking killed. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Um, I know that may not make any sense to you. It's just the irony of the uh, so-called equal rights. We're not equal. None of us are fucking equal. I just... Now that I'm out and I'm, and I'm older and I'm secure, I don't have to play that fucking bullshit. You ladies can't fucking hang in the military. Don't fucking act like you can hang. And you and you two fake rangers. They lowered the standards for you two. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. All right. I feel better. All right. Stay safe and healthy, gentlemen. Um, 
Nah, take care of each other if you can. If you can't, take care of yourself. Like a fart in a G-string from West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.